and they really like you, it's gonna take a <laughs> to actually make them realize. So a really good example of this, um, I might make people some really upset when I say this. I think you're one of the only people I can say this to, okay? <laughs> Is that like, no, Destiny, disappointed you'd platform to be honest, but it's your show. No, why do you talk to that horrible person? <laughs> oh man. Anytime I know I'm gonna talk to somebody, I load up their chat like two hours first, just so that I can scroll up and see like what they're saying about me before I actually chat. I'm just curious to see what the general consensus is. You're gonna get overrun with destiny chuds. Oh no. Dicks. <clears throat> Hello, Hi. what's up? How you go? Are you there? Yeah. Oh, you might cut in and out for a sec. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fantabulous. Causing trouble? Always. Always. I wouldn't be doing my job um, if I wasn't, right? I know. Um, hey. That's... So your tweets. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the random person's tweets that you've been commenting on. Uh -huh. Um, I just happen to agree with a lot of their. I don't know why. It feels like this person is <laughs> digging into the recesses of my mind for some of these things, but yeah. Digging into your mind. Okay, yeah. so, <clears throat> look. I don't 100% disagree with you, and I understand the sentiment. And I think that there's some really good points in what this random person on Twitter has said, right? Uh -huh. Wow, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but as with all things on Twitter, also, who the f sold me out in my community? Who said that I was... Anyway, tell me later. Oh, yeah. um, I can't uh... give up my sources like that. They get... <laughs> They'd be burned. But... <laughs> um, so my issues relate to, one, the general thing of Twitter, right? Making it impossible to have a meaningful discussion so if i were to straw man this tweet from this random person i would say it sounds a bit victim blamey like you're putting the responsibility for being sexually abused on women doing literally anything because anything that is intimate or private that relates to a woman is somehow seen as a sexual invitation um but do you agree that that's like given yeah. the thread that i link and everything that that's like a little itty it's a bit tiny bit of a stretch a little bit of a reach well, I just said if I was straw manning mm -hmm. you, sure. that okay, would be, yeah. yeah. Okay. So like if I was doing a, a, the worst bad faith interpretation, keeping in mind that a lot of people don't click through on links and they just see what you've written mm -hmm. without that, right? So that would be a contention I'd have there. And secondly, my big contention would be I disagree ever with like across the board rules mm -hmm. being put on sexual interaction. It feels like very... Uh, this, I, this is not a claim against you. This mm -hmm. is a problem with the discourse generally. Sure. It feels super like pickup artisty and the eye slurry that it's like, oh, you can't work out how to, to deal with another human being. Here's a rule book. Mm -hmm. So put the coins in and you get sex out. And it kind of feels like instead of just, and, and this is a criticism of even the original guy who actually in, in the Reddit thread seems quite sweet. Um, but being like, oh, my friend told me she actually wanted to fuck and I missed it. And then what do you guys think? It's like, how about you talk to her mm -hmm. <laughs> or like, you know, make a move and like, don't like assault her, but like try something a little bit and, mm -hmm. you know, see how that goes instead of asking the internet for advice. Sure. Um, and so my criticism, and then I, you know what I heard Merrick on your stream, like you were listening to her this morning. I heard her this morning. Mm -hmm. I disagree with this whole like managerial system of consent where it's like check every two seconds that it's good, right? Like consent isn't sufficient to deal with these kinds of interactions mm -hmm. um, because it limits it to this idea that it's a yes or no, that this other person is a gateway in between you and sex and you just have to get the tick of approval and then you're good to go sure. instead of treating another person like a human being mm -hmm. um, with their own desires. Yeah. So my main problem is it the framework of consent and the idea that there are across the board rules that can will hold in every single situation mm -hmm. when that's just not the case. That Well, so that is true. Mm -hmm. um, one issue that I have is... Um, if you go to any broad forum mm -hmm. and you have any question whatsoever related to sex or relationships, oftentimes there's going to be one upvoted response every single time. Do you know what yeah. it usually, it's like communication, which is true that there is no substitute for that. Um, although I think that it's like, I think that we can have like a little bit more of a fleshed out conversation about that. Um, and I, I think that it's good to be able to do that rather than to just say like, 
communication, communication, communication every time. Or it reminds me of like somebody's like, oh, I have an issue. And everybody's like, oh, go to therapy, go to therapy, go to therapy. It's like, okay, what the fuck? Why, why is that the response to every single fucking problem is go to therapy? Like, you, that's not an answer, right? Um, the issue that I have, well, so um, I'm going to deal with more of the second part of what you said. I don't, we can talk about the first slide, I guess, if we want. The, the issue that I have is that like, I agree that there, it, there's not like a general like, oh, like they've done, you know, like A, B, and C, and now like the pussy Voltron has assembled and I can fuck her because the right things were done. <laughs> I agree that it's not necessarily like that, but there are like some pretty broad, um, should I say, customs that people will yeah. kind of like go through. And like, there are some things where it's like, if you check off like this and this and this and this, it shouldn't be like a checklist in your head. Ideally, these are all things that you are like actively engaging with or thinking about, although not everybody apparently can. Um, and then that's kind of, that gives you, that clues you into like what the other person wants. Uh, and then obviously we understand that these things can change very dynamically, that moods change, people change, whatever. And it's not like you never get like a license to fuck regardless of how the other person's feeling once you've accomplished a certain number of things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, so in that case, so things like, you know, like if somebody's touching you while they're talking to you, if they make a lot of eye contact, they laugh at dumb jokes, et cetera. Like you can go on like a million like random fucking things where you can kind of piece it like, oh, okay. When it comes to things like, um, when it comes to things like inviting somebody over to your house, like that's one of those things where it's like, if you're on a date with somebody or you've gone on a couple dates with somebody and they get to the point that we are inviting you to their house, oftentimes that's like your, one of your biggest like amps up to like intimacy. In my personal experience and then in any person that I've ever talked to, um, that's like a, a, an indicator that they, they're intending for something more to happen. Otherwise, like you mm. can go to any other place. Um, and so like I think that even though there's not like checklists or whatever, I think that you have to engage with people in ways that not only like do you communicate your sexual like desires or whatever this way, but you understand broadly that the culture does because that's how they're going to interpret things. Sorry, that was a big word, whatever, go. I mean, it gave me things to think about though. Mm -hmm. Cause like in the same vein of you saying that in terms of like there are social customs and we need mm -hmm. to be aware of things. This is my biggest objection to your whole like women need to make more moves argument, right? Mm -hmm. Because to me, you're not acknowledging that there are different social realities when it comes to making a first move. So like what we were talking about in my chat just before is that like can't in one tweet say, don't invite someone over to your house unless you want to have sex. Mm -hmm. And then in the next tweet, be like, be, be more forward. If it's like literally me inviting someone to my home is apparently uh, an invitation for sex. So if I do anything, that's going to be like viewed as a huge green light. And I think also... Wait, 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 wait. Can we wait like two wait, seconds? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. It's lagging it. real quick. Yeah, hold on, wait. Or actually, wait, I'm going to call you and then we can change servers directly. One sec. Okay, okay. We're going to go all the way to Sydney. Hold on. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right, your thing is fine. Okay. Um. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so like, okay, first of all, the whole inviting people to the house. I agree. Sure. Okay, a lot of the time that's sexual. I think uh, there are, we're in a pandemic. That's something that needs to be acknowledged. So gathering in public creates a different, there's obstacles to gathering in public places. I think some people just feel more comfortable in their home. I don't think, I think you can say broadly. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Come so on. Yeah, go. For it. I'm going to fight to the death on every single one of these. Um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. R r okay, run through that list again. Uh, there's a pandemic. Okay. So this is where we cross the world from, um, and this is one of the reasons why, so um, I'm a very, um, I don't know what to say, but I'm a very sexual person. Sex is a very big hobby to me. I enjoy it. I like talking about it. I like engaging in it. Um, and I feel very strongly about a lot of the topics revolving around it. And one of the things that disappoints me the most is I feel like it is impossible to find good resources online for it. Um, you're either in a very, very left-leaning world where it's an idealistic utopia that doesn't map onto reality, or you're in the right-leaning world where they're trying to turn you into a rape machine. Um, so, it's very, so it's very frustrating to me. So when we talk about inviting somebody over to your house, I would, if, if I was talking to a friend, if I was talking to a woman that was asking me for advice about sex and she was saying like, hey, so like, it's the pandemic. Um, I met a stranger on Tinder and I'm gonna invite them over to my house. Like, I would absolutely say this is the absolute fucking worst idea that you could ever do in your entire fucking life. Well, there's probably worse ideas, but like. I know, 
still meant you on this on my stream. I was yeah. like, I reckon that he's probably trying to say that this is not safe. Yeah. For, for one thing, Holy if you don't fuck. want sex and you invite someone over, like you're not actually putting yourself in a safe situation. Mm -hmm. But it's like a little bit paternalistic, right? To say, oh, you, it's 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 a. I know it's a, a big jump, but it's quite an easy jump to make from don't invite someone to your house if you don't want to get raped to don't wear slutty clothes if you don't want attention or don't drink if you want to be safe. Like the, this kind of paternalistic advice that makes women feel like any sexual encounter they have is going to be dangerous at its base. So I think that- incongruent with you saying that women should be making more moves. You can't hold both there, positions okay, in my I, opinion. I, I, there's no contradiction between any of these things. There, We can find elements of truth in all of these without them being victim blaming. So for instance, like if you wear a certain thing, you deserve to get, nobody ever deserves to get raped or anything happening, okay? However, what you wear does like set the signal for like what it is you're after in a particular uh, like dating environment or in a particular, right? You wear certain clothes to work. You wear certain clothes when you go out with friends. You wear certain clothes, right? Now, nothing entitles somebody to rape you, but it does set the tone of the mood of like um, whatever environment you're in. You ha That's important to recognize. That doesn't excuse a rapist and doesn't mean that, oh, well, you wore slutty clothes, so I fucked you or whatever. Obviously not, but you are going to fuck with people's brains if, you, if your attire is completely incongruent with whatever message you're trying to send to the other person. And I feel like sometimes mm. people are so quick to jump on the like victim blame victim blame victim blame culture that we're in this world where we actually just can't even give like good advice anymore um where, where like if you go so for instance or, or like that you shouldn't go out drinking and getting blackout drunk you absolutely should not i'm sorry but yeah. you shouldn't that's such a horrible fucking idea i personally i don't take drugs ever when i'm at parties with any people ever i don't even know if i would with people i trust i get really fucking nervous about that um and i would say that goes triply so for a girl i would say quadruply triply so so like times 12 multiplying those together to the 12th exponent so if you're on a date with a stranger who's offering you drugs yeah. right um, I think that we can make these statements of like, hey, like, obviously it's bad to rape. I guess we'd still have to say that or else the Twitter police are going to get you. But like, you should like take steps to keep yourself reasonably safe. And I don't, and I would even argue a little bit for my LGBT position. So as a guy who is like fucked with other guys, I have never brought a guy back to my house before. Fucking somebody is infinitely less scary than letting them know where I live. So I don't think it's yeah. that controversial to say it, like, Hey, like, I don't think you should bring somebody back to your house unless like sex is on the menu because you're opening them up to like a really intimate part of your world and you're giving them a lot of leverage over you if they're actually fucking insane. Yeah, I, don't know. I think maybe this is just like a I, I, I agree with you and I don't agree with you, right? Like, of course, we need to be able to give advice. Of course, that is like the way the world works. I do not think that the way to protect yourself is necessarily to tell women to stop dressing a certain way. I think it's to tell men to stop reading into the way women dress as a clear cut signal. Of course, it is indicative. It might be suggestive. Like you might think that it, it is a, a signal towards something, but it is not uh, enough in and of itself. It's not sufficient within itself. And I think the issue with your tweet is that people were reading it as if you were saying, inviting someone to your home is sufficient as a condition to say that you're down to fuck. Right. And of sure. course, if I invite you over to my house, maybe it's like a signal that maybe I'm interested in you. Maybe I'm considering this turning into something more. But that is not 100 percent a true thing. Like that's not already sorted. You can't read that as permission. Sure, of course. It's not like I invite you to my house and now I enter and I like strip and now we jump on the girl immediately because we're good to go. Of course, maybe it's bad for me to say, obviously, that's, that's not the case. But like if somebody... I, I disagree with this idea that like, oh, like we can't factor into it all, like how people dress. Like that's such, I don't think that anybody truly believes. I don't believe but that the, anybody truly believes that. I think that if you're going out on a date with somebody, you are very particular about the types of clothes you choose. If you're going on a business event or a casual event, or whatever, people are particular about the ways that they present themselves. And all of the ways that we do this are part of human interaction. Now, as somebody that may or may not be a little bit on the spectrum, I personally would, I, I like, if I, if like, my sexual encounters are almost completely negotiated before me because I think it just makes everything way yeah. fucking easier. It's literally like, what are you into? What are you not into? What do you like? What don't you like? And then boom, 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 boom. And then when we meet in person, like all of that shit is already taken care of because fuck trying to figure that yeah. out on the spot. But not most normal people are not like this. And I don't think most people, I don't even know most people would enjoy this or are capable of this because it's just not the way that most people negotiate like these types of encounters. And if they're not, then we have to understand that when we say things like, well, you know, we've got to pay attention to their body language and how they're feeling. Well, part of how a person dresses and all of that is, is, is part of that body language and it's part of like the messages that somebody sends to somebody. Exactly. Like, I agree, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, of course, I mean, to be fair, 
I would push back on the fact that like I'm always dressing to send a signal to someone else because a lot of the time I'm dressing for myself and it's got nothing to do with anyone else, right? When but you're yes, on a of date? Course have, of course there have been times where I have dressed to send a certain signal. I'm not I'm not denying that. I'm talking more broadly than just the the um circumstances of a date. Like if you're going out clubbing or partying. Well, sure, I'm not but I'm right? I'm not talking about like broadly. I'm saying in, within the context of our conversation within, on a date, okay. right? If you're like walking around the house and you're wearing like something scanty and you're just alone and like the mailman comes and I'm like, "Oh, I wore this cuz I want to fuck." Obviously, I understand that. But like when you go on a date, you you are being very intentional or you should be being very intentional about the way that you present yourself. So like things you wear and the way that you act like are going to send signals to somebody because that's how most people like negotiate these events is through these kind of like subtle signals. I think the objection that I have is the the sufficiency thing right like i agree uh -huh. with you i think when you give advice to people saying this is how normal people interact right uh -huh. you're also sort of like reifying that behavior and that action and you're saying normal people don't talk about things normal people don't communicate well maybe they should right like i understand the whole like concern for women's safety etc cetera, etc cetera, but i think encouraging further communication and okay part of what i said earlier when i was going through things like i did a big talk on consent the other day and a bunch of people it was on prime kai's channel and then all of these people jumped on afterwards and everyone who agreed with me were exactly the kind of people that i did not want agreeing with me they didn't understand my point yeah at of all. course unfortunately and like, yeah. yeah and this is what i saw sort of happening in your tweet is that people who are agreeing with you weren't actually agreeing with you and the people who are fighting against you weren't putting like good faith yeah but i think I'm going to push and I'm going to say that part of the reason for this now is because of the amount of sea lining that goes on every time like any of these topics comes up. Like it feels a little bit disingenuous that every time you mention literally anything about anything having to do with sex or relationships, you need a 14 page disclaimer about enthusiastic consent, informed consent, don't rape people, et cetera, et cetera. And it's like, Oh my God, please get the fuck over yourself. Not you in particular, but like all the people that are like, I think my initial tweet was something like, uh, like if you are, you should not be inviting people back to your house after a date that you're not comfortable fucking. And like the quote replies are like, destiny thinks that if you go into somebody's house, they have unlimited consent to rape you infinitely. It's like, Oh my fucking God. Calm the fuck down. Like, no, okay, that yeah. shit feels like a little bit fucking crazy. And it's funny because, like, you mentioned, because I think that you can see where people come from. Because you mentioned that, like, well, maybe there are problematic things related to, uh, you know, like, who should be making moves or whatever. And, but there are people that actually responded saying things like that. And, like, I think that's a perfectly fine conversation. So one of my tweets was, it'll only become this easy when women join the adult dating world of consent and stop expecting men to make every single fucking move. And somebody yeah, replied to Sure, I love that tweet because it is so fucking true. Oh my god, nothing, I hate that nothing tweet. turns, nothing turns head. men into incels faster than women that cry about how scary rejection is and about how men need to respect our boundaries and not be so pushy, but men also oh need to push god. on every single fucking part of the <laughs> sexual encounter. Nothing turns people into incels faster. But somebody replied to me and they said. Isn't that a concoction that men got going in the first place, though? Honest question, which is a good question. And my reply is, mm. partially, yeah, because dumb fuck men who want women to fuck more, shame women who fuck more. It's a good cycle of self-perpetuating dipshit patriarchy dumb shit that leaves everyone feeling like shit for engaging in sexual pleasurable behavior. So that's like a good, like, back and forth conversation. And I think it establishes more. Yeah. Sure. It establishes more where I'm at than just like, oh, interesting, Destiny. I didn't know you were pro-rape. It was like, Jesus fucking Christ. And also, for a lot of these dating conversations, a lot of these problems are two-sided. Like, do men feed into a lot of it? Absolutely. But oh my fucking God, do women feed into it as well. There are women that I could not fuck by saying, I want to come to your house tonight and fuck. But if we do this stupid little fucking like, hey, do you want to go out and see a movie? And do I kind of go back? And, and, like, hey, hey. and we all like know where it's going, who are like way more down for that. There are women that put things in their Tinder profile like, oh, like, I never hook up. I'm not here to hook up. I never fuck on the first date. Who absolutely do and who have in the past and it's like i feel like and again i'm not i'm not trying to make this one-sided because men play into this a lot too but women also play back as well they don't want to be seen a certain way they want to give up a certain pressure and it does cause this game back and forth that like i think everybody has to, is forced to engage in sorry god no a hundred percent and i mean like you know my discourse enough to know that if there's anyone who is anti like reducing this conversation to a matter of consent mm -hmm. it's me mm -hmm. if there's anyone who is sympathetic to the fact that it would fucking suck to be a dude it is me like it's humiliating sexual and the way and i said in my stream earlier like i don't think women help themselves when they react not just with like grace 
because of all the like sort of paternalistic danger shit that's fed to us Uh but like a guy will like make a move on a girl she's not into it and she reacts with indignation like oh my god how could you you're such a creep like i didn't want this if you're a fucking sicko like why would you read into this that would be i would hate to be a dude and have to deal with that and be constantly worried that someone was going to turn around and call me a predator Uh as much as it sucks to be a woman to to feel like every single person is looking for an opportunity to fuck you right Uh so I think, yes, girls play games, boys play games. There's no real way around this, right? Uh There's no, especially given that women uh, historically, and even if it's not as present anymore, it's still in the history of our social fabric, are viewed as valuable based on their sexual chastity. A woman's, like the honesty of her testimony in court used to be attached to her sexual purity. Uh So... Uh, even in court cases, like there's a, a defamation court case in Australia at the moment where a woman claims that someone sexually assaulted her and evidence from her Instagram where she's in sexually provocative outfits, testimony from people who've been at parties with her where she was more sexual has been e- entered as evidence to discredit her. Uh-huh. So it is difficult. And even, okay, rape fantasies. You know how people always bring up, oh, women have rape fantasies, you know, like yeah. consensual non-consent and stuff. Women are not liberated to have sexual desire. They're only allowed to desire to be desired. So having someone like chase you and acting like you don't want it, it's put into the sexual sort of code of conduct for women. They're not taught to be allowed to have desire because the second that they want sex, they're a slut. True. So, and then they have no social worth. So I admit it's confusing. And you know what else makes it even more fucking confusing? Half the time, and I'm sure it's just as true of men as it is as women, half the time, women don't even know in the moment if what they want. Like women don't know ahead of time if they're gonna want sex or not. Even when you're having sex with someone, you might change your mind about something. Uh-huh. So this, co- this constant discourse around consent and acting like it's a yes or no question, it's not something that's negotiated and it's not something that changes over time and changes during an action and that you don't have to actually be engaged with your partner and like check that they're good is so uh, destructive to the communication around sex. This, and this is why you can't find papers and shit on it because no one can talk about sex unless it's anecdote, trauma, or consent. And they're mm-hmm. the only frames of discourse we use to talk about sex. Sure, I don't disagree with any of that, 100%. But to, to, move, so, to, to move forward to like, the problem is that right now, the paradigm that is set up, I think encourages, like, I don't want to say encourages, but it leads to predictable outcomes. So like, when you have women that are... Um, Okay, so let me preface this obviously by saying every, there's pressures coming from both sides, right? But descriptively speaking, when you have women that are playing hard to get, that won't make any of the first moves, that are constantly waiting for guys to kind of like advance every stage of the encounter, if, like, if that is the case, and you know, the especially, fuck, especially guys like younger than 25 that don't know fucking anything about anything, right? You're going to wind up in these cases over and over and over and over again where guys are overstepping boundaries, where a guy doesn't know if he's supposed to keep pushing or if it's not or if she's playing hard to get or if like, like you get into these really, really, really weird worlds where you just, you've, just, you've set up an environment where people are like set up to, to fuck up and fail. And I think in order to fix this, I think there has to be like pressure from both sides. I don't think it can be only men that fix this problem. It can't be only women that do it. Like it has to be like a coming together in the middle to acknowledge that like, okay, like our discourse around this is toxic. We've, we're like trying to change the culture in a pretty dramatic way. Um, and it's gonna require efforts from both sides. I think it definitely requires efforts from both sides. And I think it's one of those things where like society, right? Like uh-huh. a, a huge thing that would shift the situation for women would be to remove sexual shame around desire for sure like if there was if there was more sexual agency for women then you would see women make it like if women were taught to think about sex other than like their partner like a lot of uh the language and the behavior from more um fringe like like queer communities or even like kink communities are much better at talking about sex and talking about desire without attaching shame to it and pushing to make that more mainstream, not in terms of like the sex acts, but the communication around sex Uh would be really helpful to changing women's attitudes around sex and changing society's view of women and sex. Uh And that would help women communicate better and make more moves and do all of that stuff. But to expect women to just out of the blue at the same time as you're saying, don't bring someone home because they might rape you to expect women to like be more sexually aggressive or have more sexual agency it's really confusing message because if i am like sitting somewhere and i touch my mouth and someone uh, like views that as sexual it's like of course i'm not going to fucking make a move on someone um if if me just existing is already viewed as sexual yeah but like this is kind of what i'm saying is that like 
I, I, I don't think these things are contradictory at all. I think these things actually go hand in hand. When you say, have more sexual agency, but don't bring someone home to rape you, that bringing someone back to your house is like the lack of sexual agency, right? Like a girl mm -hmm. won't, a girl will, or I've never had it. I don't know, maybe there are super chats out there. I've never had a girl say like, unless it's like a friend, like a friends with benefit long-term that we know what's happening. I've never had like a girl be like, do you want to come to my apartment and fuck? They will never say that. Instead it's, do you want to come up and have a drink? Or do you want to come up and like watch a couple shows? Or do you want to come and watch a movie? Or do you want to come up and just chat or whatever? Like it's always that, right? And it's like, if, if, it, if it was more forward, it would be like easier to, to negotiate or figure out, I guess, right? Like, I don't think that like, I'm not telling somebody like, don't bring anybody home with you. I'm just saying like, if you're going to like, be more straightforward about it. Don't like, yeah. don't extend that kind of like, confusing invitation to a guy it, although i personally don't think it's confusing i think only twitter saying that and then you go up to the apartment and now it's on the guy to figure out if he's going to go for it or not because also like fuck how holy fuck like how fucked is that scenario where because the girl might change her mind but how does she how does she even signal that right because now as a girl you've put yourself in a fucked spot because you've signaled that you're ready for him to make a big move so you bring him up to your room but what if you change your mind you can't tell him like i've changed my mind i don't want to fuck because you know everyone said you did want to fuck like everything is just so fucking weird at that point right that i i think that i think that these things go hand in hand that, like having more sexual agency means being like oh just a, a smidgen more straightforward and then on top of all of that when when there's all this confusion that exists to get these dipshits online that are coming online and being like, oh, well, actually bringing someone to your room has nothing to do with sex at all. It's like, OK, that's great. Like, tell me you're a virgin without saying it. Why the fuck are you even contributing to this conversation? Like, go the fuck away. Like, it, it, it adds another layer of confusion over everything when these like very, very woke people come on and they start adding their sex takes that are totally incongruent with reality. And then it, like it adds like a whole other layer of confusion, which is mainly what I was fighting back with my initial tweet. But yeah. I think online discourse as well is like extremely guilty of reducing everything to consent mm -hmm. and pushing this dumb fucking narrative of enthusiastic consent, which I hate more than anything. Um, because like there are actually other things that you can do, like you can respect someone as a human being and mm -hmm. that will get you a lot of the way. But I think um, I it's it's a very difficult thing to sort of find agreement on because I in the same way would say oh well just don't ever expect sex based on anything other than someone's behavior in the moment right so and and part of that might be an invitation into the house something, something mm -hmm. might be like what they're wearing something might be like a hand on the leg but any one of those things individually is not enough for you to go oh yeah we're gonna fuck tonight boys like for it's sure. not enough yeah I agree it's not but it, they're strong signals um but yeah it's not enough yeah for sure sure but I mean like also okay I might, I might be like, this is sort of anecdotal, but like mm -hmm. sometimes people don't know until the moment where like, you know, you might be like, okay, maybe I was really into it, but actually you said something super fucking racist at dinner and now I'm not into it anymore. And I kind of want you to leave, but I want to be polite or like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't want to, and now I kind of do like, it's assuming a lot of forethought to be like, I'm going to arrange all of my dates. So every technical thing doesn't send the wrong signal. Uh, because apparently this person is incapable of reading when I actually make overt sexual signals like touching or talking or any of that. Yeah, I, I agree. But like, um, and maybe now I'm, now I'm leaving, now I'm leaving the world of autism and I'm, and I'm, I'm praying, I'm hoping that, that people yeah, can go to the next level of human communication. Um, <laughs> because I, I don't even know how to have this conversation. People are stupid. And people, <laughs> people, people will see what they want to see. And I, I believe that that will never, ever, ever change. I don't think that that is part of the human condition will change. If I, if you lead somebody on, and I'm not using that as a, like a horrible, like, oh, you're fine. But I mean, like, if you like send out enough sexual signals and they're feeling it and they really like you, it's going to take a <laughs> to actually make them realize that you're not interested because you got to consider like, there are people that will think somebody likes them. And then like, you'll go through the messages or you'll go through the interaction like, dude, this girl was turned off from you like fucking two weeks ago. What's wrong with you? Like people that will send like five, six or seven messages with no response or people that will keep asking to hang out like five, six, seven times. And the person's like, oh, I'm busy. You can't do it. Sorry. And they never like offer another time. Right? People don't see that. So like if you are out with somebody and you're dropping a lot of signals and your mind does change at some point in the night, that person's not going to pick up on that subtle change in demeanor. They're going to like they're in go mode and they hope to death, even outside of like a sexual predator, even just in a romantic or like a person person since they like they really think that's going to happen they really wanted to and i think that i think that people need to be aware of that when they're having these types of interactions with people 
agree, but I think that your advice makes people less likely to pick up pick up on signals because instead of encouraging people to be in tune with the person that they're with you're saying here's an across the board rule if she invites you to her house she wants to fuck right and so my objection is Mm -hmm. that like we should be encouraging people to to be better at reading signals instead of trying to provide this weird pick up artist incel playbook where it's like here are the rules boys like you got this i would i i wish i really want to agree with you but unfortunately, Chitula. like the problem is that like the the types of people that need that advice don't need that advice. Um, mm-hmm. Like I don't need somebody to tell. Like for me, like I, I, it's so stupid because everybody says this, obviously. But like if I'm with somebody, like I can tell if they're not feeling it, and if they're not feeling it, like I'm done. I don't push any harder, and and I know that. And in in my opinion. I think that when you're with somebody, it's usually pretty obvious, um, especially like before sex has happened. Like you can tell if somebody's not feeling it. But if you're the type of person that is like considerate enough to pay attention to those types of things, you're not the kind of person that needs somebody online to tell you like, hey, like be aware of like another person's body language or be aware of like how another person feels. Whatever. Like you don't need that advice, right? Like this is more for people that clearly miss these signals or don't have enough like person to person interaction. And then in that case, like you do have to back up to like, okay, well, let me help you with some people interaction right if somebody invites you to your house that's a big signal that they're probably like gearing up for sex so like be ready for that right that's not saying like go to the house and rape them immediately right but like just be that's like part of the the cultural vernacular of what's happening or if somebody touches you or they laugh or they're talking to you or if somebody sits really close to you or whatever like these are all part of that vocabulary i i i love the concept of being able to tell people like hey pay attention to their body language but like I, I don't, I've never, I don't know if that works. I wish it did, but like, it feels like the people that need to hear these things aren't the people that are capable of perceiving that or pay attention to that anyway. I mean, I agree with you a hundred percent that there are people who need like a bit more guidance, right? But mm-hmm. sometimes I think that in pushing people and giving them these rules, you make, you make the alternative impossible, right? Because you've given them the out. So now you can't teach them to communicate and do body language. I also think the framing in terms of sex is really damaging, right? You could be like, hey, if she's invited you to over to her house, Mm -hmm. look, she clearly likes you. She clearly wants to take things further without it being like, she wants to fuck. Because like, then it opens people up to thinking like, oh, maybe I'll make a move. I think this this also reduction of sex just to like straight up penetrative intercourse is harmful to the discourse as well because there are other things like you can take a relationship further without like fucking and and to me it's like this weird thing of here are the rules here are the signals to look out for once this criteria is met you're good to go get your sex leave collect go like collect two hundred dollars when you pass go like it's not useful in terms of creating a good sexual climate for anyone it's not good for creating good sex for anyone so my issue is I totally hear what you're saying. There are people mm-hmm. who need more guidance. I agree. But I think in giving them guidance, which is like, here is a uh, book of rules for interactions with the other sex. You're actually limiting them to never be able to pick up on those signals. And like when you look at research on a lot of people who are just everyday people who have accidentally sexually assaulted someone, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not these big rapist monsters that are apparently out there waiting to get women on the street, but mm-hmm. friends and partners. A lot of them, when they've given qualitative like uh, evidence after the fact, have said, I feel so terrible about it. I didn't realize I was doing it because I wasn't paying attention to her. I didn't I wasn't watching her face or like I I just didn't know that it was bad until it was too late. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're also gearing people up for like more shitty experiences because you're not teaching people to be in tune with whoever they're fucking. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I I totally agree. I, it just, it feels like they're separate conversations. And it feels like you have to meet people kind of, like, culturally, like, where they are. Um, but do you not feel mm-hmm. like telling people shit like, oh, if she invites you to her house, she wants to fuck, is a clear way to say, oh, ignore your partner, just focus on this. You've already been given mm-hmm. the go-ahead. You, she met the rule. Well, th- but the problem is that, like, the, the types of people that are asking these questions aren't the types of people that you can say, like, oh, bro, like, just pay attention to her body language and how she feels. Like, clearly that part is not working. Because if it was, because those types of people don't post things like that, right? Like, but do you I, they, not feel like mm-hmm. that guy, he said it was a good date. He said that they had good conversation. He said that he was, like, a little concerned, so he asked a friend, and then apparently the entire internet. But, like, in that moment, he seemed to be picking up on things, like... They're going on another date. The guy, so the guy like, missed like two. Probably. Like the girl is literally saying, "Like, I, uh, I'm gonna invite you back over. I don't do this very often. Like, it's like it's 
pretty like heavy incentive like or, or heavily implied like what, what exactly is going on and the guy seemed to like completely miss that and like he, and here's the next step of the problem that i have and let me preface this again by saying i hate all of this okay so i agree with you that this is cancerous as fuck right but let's yeah. say that this guy now so he spent all this time in these woke circles and he's been told don't make any assumptions about any of this just because someone invites you over blah 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 I'm like okay that's fine so he goes over to her house like oh she just invited me over like maybe we're gonna play video games and talk about harry potter and then he leaves right it is totally possible, if not even likely, that now that girl is asking her friends, oh my God, what the fuck is wrong with me? I don't know what the, where I fucked up. Like, I didn't want to fuck me. Yeah, yeah cause yeah. I, I invited this guy over. I told him that I don't normally do this. Like I'm not like a slut or anything, but I told him I don't know. I invited him over, I cooked dinner and he didn't fucking make a single move on me. What the fuck is wrong with me? Now I feel, right? And now the girl is like fucked up and she doesn't know what the fuck she did wrong. So like, I think that, I think we have to be honest about like where the sexual interactions are right now and like kind of like meet people there. It's like, okay, somebody does it. Like, and understand that, in an ideal world, it wouldn't work this way. And there are other, I mean, you and I have had conversations about this. The only reason I'm talking to you about this is because I know that you're not like a complete total lunatic when it comes to shit like this. Uh, or you're not a lunatic at all. I didn't mean to imply that you're partially lunatic. Yeah, uh, wow, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you might be partially lunatic in other ways. You're Australian, okay? You people are weird. Um, but like, I, so I, I agree with you on a lot of that. But like, yeah, I, just, I think it's important to meet like the culture. Like, where is it at right now? And what should people be looking for right now? Because it informs a lot of like current like interactions that people are going to have. Sure, and I'm saying just be careful that you don't reify the mm -hmm. way that things are sure. by saying you've got to meet people where they are because I think we do need to make huge improvements, both men and women, when it comes to communicating about sex. I think we need to move beyond a simple framework of consent or trauma. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that when you say don't invite it, don't invite a man over unless you're comfortable having sex with him. You're sort of like reifying a lot of discourses that I don't think should be reinforced. Do you agree that that is good advice that you would give to every single lady friend that would ask you without having like a huge conversation about yeah. it? Yeah, I'm a massive hypocrite, 100. percent But I don't know if I would tweet it out to like 20,000 people who don't know how to like. I guess that's just. I guess like that's my. I don't know where like the reasonable sexual discourse happens right now. That's Me like either. that's my problem. <laughs> is that like there you can't find advice like that on the internet. Like there and there are so many of these cases where like I'll read stuff and it's like oh my god all of the information here is horrible and there's yeah. like there's so many examples that I give where like like if you go on any sex forum you know people will say things like is it like oh like I gave my boyfriend a blowjob like is it possible it's bad and like everybody that all the most upvoted comes like oh honey there's no such thing as a bad blowjob there's no such thing as bad it's like oh my god why are you guys even talking about this or where somebody be like hey like I have like fucking huge labia or my my boobs are massively different size I got a double D and a fucking A cup like are people ever gonna look at this weird and all the most upvoted comments are like oh no nobody will care as soon as you're naked every guy's gonna jump in you they don't care at all about it it's like what the fuck this is not true a lot of people are really just right and I, I just I worry because we don't prepare people um in terms of like advice online for like what actually happens in the real world and yeah with, with these like with the, the way that I view like the the sexual dance thing is you there's like you've got like two power levels okay you've got like your true power level from one to ten how you feel about somebody and then you've got like the display power level which is like what do you let them know and the goal between any interaction is to figure out what the other person's true power level is without ever revealing your own because if you feel like an eight for somebody who only feels a four out of you and you instantly ratchet it up to like a five or six or seven or eight you are fucking humiliated so you get this like dance back and forth where it's like one on one side and then they go to two and then you go to three and you go to four and that i hate that but that seems to be like the default interaction romantically with almost everybody and i really don't see that ever changing i don't see people okay. ever being like yeah yo i really 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 like you that's cool and they're like oh yeah cool like i just i don't know if most people can handle doing that no i know but the other like even like i shudder a little bit at your mm -hmm. explanation just then even though i agree with it on some level mm -hmm. i really dislike this gamification of like interactions between human beings like, i agree I think I think like we shouldn't be, you know, like, oh, I, I achieved this. And then this, like, even like rating women, that sort of shit, even if it happens, like it, it puts a toxic, horrible fucking uh, lens over sexual discourse where it's like, I, I'm who's, who's going to win, who's mm -hmm. going to win. And like, who's going to be successful when that's not how these interactions occur. Mm -hmm. And I just think you're right. There's nowhere to have like meaningful conversations about sex on the internet. It's something that I try really hard to do to like expand beyond consent. But a tweet like that, in the context of other things that this random omni liberal person tweets, mm -hmm. uh, knowing that a lot of people won't click through, isn't necessarily expanding the lexicon around sex. It's more saying like, I get the practicality of the advice. But I think that what it does in the context of like 
how it was presented is like it presents the message that I know the author wouldn't necessarily agree with. I, I mean, like, I think that if you go really far to one end, that's one way that you can read it. But I would defend every part of the tweet start to finish. I think we both agree that the advice is sound. I think that everybody in the real world should probably function that way unless they have a very intimate relationship with their partner or they like very much know a person and they, and they do trust them and they know that this isn't something they have to worry about. Uh, and it's just annoying sometimes to me that like people pretend the world is otherwise when we're not quite there yet. Like the other advice, I, we're just going to go back and forth on this. Yeah, thing. I understand, sure. Other advice is obviously... Just don't fucking use anything other than like, and I don't like the over prescription. I'm not talking about enthusiastic consent, right? Like I'm not uh -huh. talking about a woman having to give you a thumbs up every time you like uh -huh. move a finger. But the other thing is like, if unsure, ask, or if unsure, make small move and see what reaction that gets instead of like, guys, like just like, I get that the whole like pre preparation and helping people like uh, interpret certain factors i get it but uh -huh. i just think it is it is advice that ultimately can excuse or lead to significant misreading of situations and the reason the re there's a the sort of violent reaction to it uh, in the online sort of sphere is because when a dude misreads something he gets humiliated and that like sucks right like i would hate that i i have no moral issue with a dude getting rejected and being like that chick's a fucking bitch like what a psycho mm -hmm. that's fine right although the some people even like, at that would get really upset like every woman that rejects yeah, you should be treated as a fucking queen and hopefully know, you pick amazing. her up starbucks on the way out of getting kicked out of her <laughs> yeah okay, yeah of course and i disagree mm -hmm. with that i think that's ridiculous and mm -hmm. i think that it's all right for dudes to be like oh you're a fucking psycho whatever like mm -hmm. i don't care the difference is although to be clear I'm just hold on to qualify we both understand mm -hmm. that you can be upset at a girl if she's turned you down and you thought something's gonna happen that doesn't entitle you to her body or give you a right to like force Whoa. it whatever, right we okay just being clear yeah okay go, Whoa. Right. i know that you agree that but yeah go ahead all right no 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 it's good to, it's good because to the clip is like, like destiny circle jerks with crazy right-wing girl that, that that agrees that men should be disappointed if they don't get to fuck women blah because they're entitled to their bodies or whatever. but yeah go ahead sorry i hate yeah. all of the fucking conversations around this okay go ahead sorry um no so i'm saying there's no there's no uh for me there's no moral impunity in having like a weird circle jerk with your friends about what a bitchy girl is who rejected you mm -hmm. as long as you like leave her out of it a hundred percent but the issue is the rejection for a, a woman so in terms of like um the other side of that advice for a woman. so you're saying to a dude if you you might get humiliated right if you don't know how to read these signals and that will be humiliating and a woman might come at you with indignation and all of this sort of stuff mm -hmm. For a woman, that advice is if someone you you gave them the wrong signal and now it's your fault that you've been sexually assaulted because you shouldn't have let them into your house. Mm -hmm. And it just so quickly that advice sort of puts into the culture this idea that any private or intimate moment with a woman is an invitation for sex. Sure, and I understand that, but like it just it feels a little sea liony to me that like I, I guess we're we are circling back. That like every single thing that I say needs like a two page disclaimer behind it. So like if I say something like if you are meeting somebody for like a second or third date and you have like and you still not comfortable like, you know, finding them like maybe wearing something like a little bit more modest versus something that's like incredibly provocative um, is probably like a better idea. Like if I tweet something like that, I need disclaimers because people can be like, oh, so you're saying if a woman shows up wearing something really evocative, that means that you get to rape them. That's what you are. I didn't know you was pro rape today, Destiny. Like, and it's like every single thing that you talk about related to these interactions needs like a four page, like don't rape people disclaimer behind it. And I don't know that it just, it feels you know so sea lion to me and it's so obnoxious. Come on. What? Come on, Destiny. You know, okay. You can't say in a conversation that we've just had that mm -hmm. like, oh, that there's so hard to find any good discourse around sex online, right? Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so difficult to find any like, um, good meaningful discourse around sex online and then be like oh, i shouldn't have to put out four pages of an explanation you unfortunately you have to because there's not good enough discourse around but, I, sex but that's online. like part but that's but like i think i think you i think you agree with this not with what i just said but like the problem is that you absolutely agree with this i actually i agree with something you said one million percent so much earlier is that we you will never ever 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 get to a stage online in a discussion where you're talking about like sex Instead, you are perpetually pigeonholed into a meta conversation about consent. So if mm -hmm. I ever tweet something saying like, uh, like this is maybe how you should address, you know, based on the type. Have you ever had trans debates about like children taking puberty blockers? Mm -hmm. Every single trans argument on the internet 
invariably winds up in one of two holes. You're either talking about trans athletes or you're talking about children taking puberty blockers. That is the, yeah. that is the extent of all trans discourse online. You never have conversations about like, what are things trans people can do that make them feel good when they're passing? How are ways that you address trans people? Um, people that are non-binary that don't like to be called girl or boy, what are appropriate compliments to them? Do they like to be called handsome yeah. or pretty? You never, ever, ever have. All of it is literally just, should children be force-fed puberty blockers or are trans women destroying athletic like environments? Like that's it. And it feels like with sex advice online, every single conversation immediately becomes about consent. And I think you, you brought that up earlier that everything is framed for that. So like if, if you're trying to say like, oh, like, you know, should you invite people over or not if you're not having sex? Or like, what should you wear on a date? That conversation immediately, people will come in and flock in and be like, are you saying that they, you have consent to rape them? Blah, blah, blah. And like everything, it's like, I don't even want to talk about that. That's not even part of the conversation. And yeah. I feel like putting the disclaimer like encourages that to continue to be part of the, or maybe you would agree, maybe Sorry. you would say that it doesn't. Like that's what it feels like. Everything about sex becomes, let's talk about consent always. And that's the only thing we can talk about it regarding to it. Yeah. But I mean, this is so like last week um, mm -hmm. on that panel, I was trying to bring up like bad sex as a feminist issue, right? Like mm -hmm. the orgasm gap, especially for women in, in colleges and the fact that women are, are not great at talking about like what they desire in the bedroom and like, how do we get past that, right? Mm -hmm. And I tried to frame it by saying, can we please not let it descend into my personal sex story, consent or harm, mm -hmm. right? Or trauma. No. And it's just... We don't have the language for it. So quickly it becomes like, oh, yeah, but this happened to me and, and then I was assaulted. And it's like, no wonder women don't <laughs> express desire because all that's constantly told to them is that you're in danger. And like, I, I think sometimes- Yeah, sex is like for I, women with the conversation is like, sex is like a, an ordeal that you survive. And that's like the yeah. best discourse that you have. Yeah. And, and like, you're lucky if someone doesn't assault you, if you've got consent, like that's the point. So when I try and say like, we need to move past consent. So often people who are listening to me who then come on and agree with me <laughs> later are like, yeah, consent shit, like fuck consent. And I'm like, no, 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 we need it. We just gotta yeah. move past it. And so like the fact that we're still debating consent, it's like, of course it's difficult for us to talk about these more, um, meaningful things like reciprocity and autonomy and respect and like actually like being into what your partner's into, like not having a good time unless everyone's having a good time. Can't have any of those discussions because literally, and this is the annoying thing, when I got in a fight with someone because they were like, oh, well, the house is on fire. Like people are getting assaulted. And it's like, cool, but if consent was able to fix that, all of these enthusiastic consent campaigns and everything, we would see a decrease in sexual assault, but mm -hmm. we don't because it's not enough. Like telling people that they need a yes or no, like you wouldn't have so many women walking away from consensual sex feeling shit. Mm -hmm. if that was enough and so i just think it's insufficient and i probably am of the opinion that saying guys obviously you need consent actually allows the conversation to move past it instead of getting it i know that you think it maybe encourages it to then circle around and, and focus on consent mm -hmm. but i think in terms of make moving the conversation with the online left that sort of has to be acknowledged. Otherwise, well, it's just the falling. For them, out. thankfully, most of them are stuck indoors, uh, never talking <laughs> to or associating with other people ever. But yeah, the, um, the 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 framing and the meta conversations is something that I, I noticed it like a month ago, and now I see it everywhere. That like it feels like even broader from this topic, like you don't ever actually discuss anything. Um, yeah. Every conversation just becomes a meta conversation about a conversation every time. Yeah. So if I tweet something about, for instance, like I think rent control is really bad policy um, for housing. The conversation topic becomes, does destiny hate poor people? Yeah. Or yeah, or like this is some advice for a sex thing. Is destiny pro rape? Um, or like, you know, I, I don't think that like, um, you know, like I don't know if we should forgive all student loan debts. Why does this person hate students and want people to be poor forever like we don't you don't there are no conversations that happen online ever about any given topic ever because people immediately will take the meta narrative and then based on their ideology stake a position in it and then accuse you of being literally fucking the hitler of whatever topic you're talking about and it's just so fucking obnoxious to me. i hate it something that is interesting to me and i just want to clarify because mm -hmm. obviously most of your viewership don't know me i actually am on the left because my talking points are going to sound quite right wing sure. um but i am i'm very firmly on the left but um for me it's a huge issue with cancel culture and i think it started with gorka the like publication mm -hmm. this movement from focusing on an issue to focusing on like the journalist as a person or the person who's committed the crimes like even that chick from kimmy schmidt it's like a discussion about like whether we should cancel her because of this dead ball thing instead of discussing why dead balls are like toxic and horrible right yeah so 
and you've got this weird um this entire culture that's built on cancelling right where you've got like cancellation doulas where if someone does something bad this random person pops out of nowhere and goes oh is that not enough for you to cancel them well that's okay because i've got this long litany of transgressions that this person has done Uh so now you see a pattern of abuse and we can cancel this person and it it moves this idea of like actually talking about issues in terms of talking into t- talking about people because people are a lot easier to deal with. You can just trash them and get rid of them. Yeah. Whereas solving a complex issue is much more difficult. So it's easier to focus on like destiny is pro rape and a Nazi. That is easier as a conversation and a talking point than like, hey, this topic has nuance and I'm not 100% right on every single thing. And like there are areas where the left isn't great um Mm -hmm. you know that is a lot harder to reckon with and especially online where there's so much posturing and and especially in politics online where people are trying to be experts in in the space of a week i'm an expert on critical race theory consent uh black lives matter and israel palestine and somehow i manage in a week to have the right take on all of those things and the only way i can do that is by not actually focusing on any of the issues i have to focus on how we talk about the issues and mm-hmm. who's doing the conversation yeah and what the meta narrative is right like supporting yeah. palestine or anybody that's not the u.s is good and holy and righteous and right and supporting israel or the united states makes you a fascist evil horrible person or whatever and then like you stick your position out and now you you've got like it's such an it's such a naive and stupid. I remember it back in atheist communities like 15 years ago, we would make fun of religious people like, oh, well, the world must be so easy for you when you're religious because it's so easy to determine what is right and wrong and where you go after you die. And like people do that same shit with like political ideologies. Like, well, damn, like, is this particular issue good or bad? Like, I don't know how I feel about this complicated issue. Well, let's see what the U.S. says about it. Oh, the U.S. is pro it. Oh, well, <laughs> it's fucking evil. And now you've got like your whole everything is like figured out for you. And then it leads people to saying crazy shit online like. Hamas is very good. <laughs> just like an insane <laughs> shit. And it's like, fuck, dude. I don't know. Yeah, it's. And the other thing is, as well, is that like in picking an ideology, you don't have to think through the issues because you've got that you can play for the team, right? You inherit so all you of your. Yeah, it's like religion. Yeah, you inherit you all of your positions. Yeah. But then on top of that, there are like, I mean, <laughs> if I bring up the CIA, I sound like I'm from the left, right? But I was listening. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> The CIA like, okay. is uh, the CIA is the left man's Jew, okay? The Absolutely. right, the people on the crazy right, every bad thing in history caused by Jewish uh, conspiracy. For the people on the left, every bad thing in history caused by the fucking CIA. But yeah, go ahead. Um, well, I was gonna say, I did, I did read something on the CIA doing a bit of astroturfing mm-hmm. around the left, right? And I think this happens on the right too. You have these actors who promote this ridiculous idea of the ideology, right? Mm-hmm. And it becomes impossible to. D- distinguish between what is the astroturf and what is the actual political movement and then you can discredit that political movement because you've got everyone on the left promoting Hamas and saying that CIA is responsible for everything. So now we don't have to take the left seriously and everything on the right is QAnon so we can't take yeah. them seriously. Yeah and, and the, so yeah. No you go. Uh, I was uh, yeah I, I was gonna say like and then people have problems like figuring out what they should or shouldn't support and then I feel crazy sometimes because it's like you'll you'll get like like I, I, I'm, I don't even have to exaggerate. The Makila or whatever girl that there was a black girl that stabbed another black girl. Did you see that or any idea? Yeah. This? yeah. Yeah. It's okay to say cops probably treat black people unfairly in the United States. Black people face systemic, you know, racism and oppression, especially uh, oppression, especially in our criminal justice system. But that doesn't mean you have to defend every single fucking time a cop enacts force on a black person. Like in this case, it was very clearly stupid that this black girl yeah. was trying to stab to death another black girl it's okay to say we don't own that that was fucked up but instead when you're so ideologically driven every single actor on one end becomes bad and then people end up owning all these insane positions or or, or not positions but they defend these insane one-offs it was like guys like it's okay to say like we agree with this thing and you don't have to own every single thing related to that thing it's okay to say that like cops can act with reckless um, impunity sometimes in the US, that doesn't mean that every single interaction you see with a cop and another person is the cop being a fascist murderer, you know? Like, Jesus. I think it's, it's interesting, right? Because this is rhetoric to me. This is like conviction without understanding. And I think sometimes, especially when we're living in like this sort of, God, so philosophy. When we're living in like a post-truth world, right? Where the very, the very ground of truth is completely subverted so we have no there are some facts that are mm-hmm. truer than others and are hyper reality 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> the facts that are truer than others are the ones that uh, align with my ideology. And mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter if someone was in their bed or if someone had a knife or whatever, right? It makes it very difficult to distinguish what's real from from what is just rhetoric. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that it advances anything politically, but I also think, and just while we're on the hot topics, right? Like if we look at abortion, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think that the left can be quite bad when it comes to the morality aspect of abortion. Sure. Um, because the left will say, oh, it's just, it's nothing. It's like the, a fetus isn't anything like, you know, it's just a little procedure. It's just like two tablets. Who gives a shit? Like no big deal, right? Mm -hmm. And that isn't great for women who get abortions who have complicated moral feelings about it. It isn't great for women who really, uh, who want a baby and who are pregnant with a child um, and then have to get an abortion mm -hmm. uh, because something is, is wrong with the fetus. Yeah, term, you, oh right? my God. You get so ideologically rooted in that you, un that you unfortunately start making arguments that hurt other positions that you have. Um, which and is true. There are complicated feelings that women have after abortions. And if you are just screaming like, oh, it's just, it's just a two cells. Nobody actually cares. It's not anything. Like well, that doesn't map onto the lived experience of women that have abortions sometimes. Yeah. And this is in Roe v. Wade. Like the woman who was at the center of that ended up moving to the right. She was embraced by Republicans because mm -hmm. she wasn't a good spokesperson for the left because she was bisexual and had some addiction problems. And they decided that she wasn't the person they wanted to be the face of the movement. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think when it comes to morality on this issue, I'm I'm really I don't think the left do a good job. But at the same time, literally, this is a house is on fire sort of situation. It's like, unfortunately, I'm not sure that the left can are in a position where they can say, oh, look, the the metaphysical reality of the fetus and the morality around the thing is up for debate. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think they can see that ground because like, it is a very true reality that women's access to abortion is further limited every single day. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, nuance sometimes gets lost because people feel like they don't have the ground to see. Sure, um, I understand, but like I do get, I get really concerned sometimes when people feel like they have to buy so much into their position that like they just, they end up making ridiculous arguments that I think yeah. the biggest part is it doesn't map onto reality. So a lot of people are just gonna not at all agree with you because now it looks like you're full of shit. Um, and then you start undermining other positions. Another really good example I have of this, and I'm not stating a position on this, but sometimes I ran into the past where I would argue about trans athletes with people. And because people were so ideologically bought into their particular position, like people were making these arguments towards me, unironically saying things like, um, Got him. I'm so good. I'm um, saying things like there are no average biological differences between men and women. More or less, everything is about the same. And it's like, okay, well, if we believe that, it's going to make my arguments really strange when I talk about like the dangers that women face um, related to like having sex with men and like dating culture and everything. Like, why are women like more at risk for assault than men if, on average, like we're about the same strength as each other or we're about the same height as each other? Right? Like, it doesn't make any sense anymore, right? Like, people end up buying into these insane positions that aren't congruent with other positions just because they're so scared about like giving any ground on something and that because that's how they view it i don't know i think it's all really 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 toxic yeah i mean it's shocking and it's horrible and it's not helpful and that's this is why our politics is fucked and our news is fucked and everything is dumb because we don't actually have true and false anymore we have like opinion and like opinion is the greatest enemy to the truth because it means that there are facts that are some that are seen as more factual than other facts. more convenient and yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the way you judge that is like what what fits in with what I already agree with. And people can justify based on like what they see the outcome to be just completely lying about a story. But I think mm -hmm. you're ultimately your what you're seeding to do that. Right. Like in order to say, oh, it's OK if I lie or if I distort the facts a little bit um, in order to get the outcome I desire is you're saying like I don't want a workable society. Like I'm willing to see the entire concept of something being true. Yeah. Um, so I think and that's this, pretty dangerous. Yeah, I agree. And this is like, this is part of like my huge contentions with people like Vosh or whatever. Like people that say like, well, you know, we do a little bit of lying, but as long as at the end of the day, we're accomplishing something good, it's okay. And it's like, that's a line that like, you gotta be careful because you only have to walk that a little bit until you end up with like, we get into these, such these, these huge epistemic divides in society where we actually are completely existing in totally, in totally different realities. And like, yeah, nobody knows like what is factual or true anymore. And then like all the conversations stop and it's just all like, people virtue signaling like their meta narratives to the other meta narratives and yeah oh god
I the, mo the most recent discourse I've had related to this is like I am of the mind that people need to just stop saying the word fascist completely. It needs to be eradicated from our current discourse. Nobody knows what a fascist is. It's not like prescriptive at all. We don't know what to do with a fascist, and like it isn't helpful for anything either. Like it's literally just people screaming like you're I, somebody I don't like, so I'm going to call you a fascist, and it's so fucking cringe to me. I don't. I um. I was. I was on that panel and then fascism brought up and I was like, I am leaving because I don't want to discuss fascism. Yeah. Um, but my issue, was, I mean- if you, To be fair, if you don't want to discuss fascism, the best panels to be on are anti-fascist panels because nobody there even knows what the fuck fascism is. So you're never going to talk about it on those panels. What makes you feel bad? Sorry, guys. To be fair, to be fair, um, you know that, I watched that one back. You know the girl you put on the spot and you were like, what's fascism? Yeah. I, I didn't think she was wrong. I think fascism, like I have, I am more sympathetic to her, like very, very uh, transportable view that it's like a hopeless middle, like mass that needs a charismatic leader to light, like lead them to the light, which I know can be applied to Bernie Sanders, right? Well, because he's because like, she's describing populism at that point. That is just yeah, a populist. Exactly. Yeah, and and unfortunately, I think it's it's sort of doing what you just criticized before if you focus too much on asking for a definition of fascism, right? Because it is an abstract concept. It's a cluster concept. So getting a strong, clear dictionary definition of what fascism is, all you're doing is like, let's set up the ground for this debate is essentially what you're doing. And mm -hmm. it, ha it has no relation to real world fascism at all, which I mean, there's big F fascism, but that's not generally what people are talking about. I completely disagree with um, what uh, Vosh, Vosh said on that um, panel in terms of like Bush being a fascist and Scalia being a fascist. Mm -hmm. I think that's using that term like way too broadly and loosely and it avoids much more interesting conversations, right? Like, can you be incompetent and have like fascist institutions or inclinations that are fascist around you? And does that, like, what does that count as? So like, where, what is it is, you know, even the Scalia thing mm -hmm. and more interesting argument is is originalism fascism? Sure. Or is that well, kind of tech? That's interesting. I guess like my, the issue is that like I, I view categories to me, all categories are um, are in my opinion like medical diagnoses. Like I think that the only reason any category should ever be uttered ever is because it gives us some prescriptive power. So if I'm able to call something a particular thing, that means there's like a set of prescriptions that goes along with it. And if that is lacking, then I think the definition needs to go. That's, that's- Okay, but you're yeah. half right, you're half right. Okay. Like oh, language oh God, here comes the victims. <laughs> okay, yeah, hit me up, what do you got? Language is prescriptive. It prescribes behavior. It doesn't yep. describe behavior, 100% sure. right. Mm -hmm. What is not as right is that we don't we don't look at categories on the basis of criteria. We don't have criteria which exists for category. And if you meet that criteria, it's tick, 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 you're in the, this category. Uh -huh. Normally categories work on this idea that there's a prototype at the center, uh -huh. which best represents it. And then there are things that sort of go out to the fuzzy edges and that still sort of relates, but it's just like weird, especially for abstract concepts, there aren't strict definitions in those cases. It's more to do with like, you can be closer to this central prototypical idea of what this concept is, or you can be further out. Um, so I understand like the prescriptive stuff. I think there is use in terms of having some sort of prescriptions associated with something, but to suggest that it's um, like a container, like something that's very bound, just isn't how our brain works with categories. Especially something like fascism. Dude, I am a fucking god. But I understand what you're saying. Um, the, the, the only problem that I have is that, and I don't know if you agree or disagree with this, um, I feel like there can become a point where a definition just gets too stretched and then it loses its like utility. Like, so for instance, if we have a definition of something, but nobody really knows what it is, um, and nobody can really give you like a prescription of what to do with it, and then people are starting to wield it as a weapon without knowing what it is, I feel like that's harmful. And at that point, we should probably seek to get rid of it. So for example, is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. This is my issue with consent. So this is what I call conceptual, I mean, I call, <laughs> philosophy calls conceptual bloat. Mm -hmm. It's when you overload a concept and try and stretch it to contain all of these other things. So like in terms of fascism, it's like uh, fascism is now populism and authoritarian and supporting and cops and being Republican and being anti gay. Yeah. Like I've had somebody say that like my trans athlete takes or whatever makes me a fascist or like whatever. It's like what the fuck. What, what like it literally is just like every it's like that one meme with the guy holding the book. And it's like everything I don't like is fascism or yeah. Nazism or whatever. Yeah. And so the issue is not only does that make fascism a bloated and useless term where we can't talk about fascism anymore because it means everything, mm -hmm. but also it makes it into um, 
it means that we can't talk with specificity about the actual issue. Mm -hmm. So if your problem is authoritarianism, but you're referring it to fascism, then we never get to the root of that problem because sure. you're not directly identifying it. If your mm -hmm. problem is supporting cops, you're not actually talking about that when you're talking about fascism. Yeah. So you you never actually get to the root of the problem because you're using language incorrectly and yeah. you've loaded a term. And you're obfuscating so what you're actually talking about. And then now you're doing harm to the concepts you're trying to like convey because now nobody knows what's being talked about. You're you're unconvincing because other people that have different understandings of your definition are going to like immediately disagree with you, right? Like I'm not exactly. a fascist. I know what a fascist is, right? Everybody else, people will say every single Republican is a fascist, and it's like, well, any Republican that hears that is going to immediately disagree with literally every fucking. Thing you could possibly say um so yeah like i don't like all of that is just very 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 irritating to me yeah yeah and i mean like that's i think also on the other on the other end of the spectrum using like umberto echo's definition of fascism isn't useful either because especially if you're pushing it out to talk about examples that don't strictly adhere to that set of definitions mm -hmm. then you're now you're now taking the concept and removing it from its ordinary everyday use so like, sure. it's important to use language the way it's used, but also you can't use it to, to talk about things that it's not. I, that sounds like a bunch of words that don't mean anything, but I hope Sure, it means about as much as what fascism, yeah, I just, because like, the goal seems to be that like, and, and I notice like, we can actually bring this around to the sexual consent thing. You take mm -hmm. something that's really bad, that we all agree is really bad. And then if we have that particular thing that we agree is like really bad, now we're going to take that concept and we're gonna slowly stretch to include other things that we think is bad. Yeah. And then what happens is, is when somebody says that particular thing happens, now we can immediately identify or categorize it with that one word. So now everybody, we've signaled that it's bad. Um, but for people that like aren't immediately bought in, they don't know anymore like what exactly um, is even being talked about. Um, so like yeah. that, so that a lot of that was kind of like wishy, or that didn't mean much. But like, so a really good example of this, um, I might make people sound really upset when I say this. I think you're one of the only people I can say this to. Okay, <laughs> is that like, it sounds really bad to say this, but like, if somebody tells me that they were sexually assaulted, I don't actually know if that's like a huge thing or if it's just like some kind of like kind of unfortunate minor thing that happened, right? Because nowadays, and I'm not saying that it's necessarily bad that we round up this, right? But like nowadays, sexual assault can either be like a guy like borderline forcibly penetrating with his fingers inside of his dorm and I hated it versus like somebody touched my back in a way that made me uncomfortable when I was at the office. Now, yeah. both of these things are bad, but like when everything gets labeled with the same word or people do it with the word racist, like yeah. I feel like the, the original words are become meaningless and then they lose like the kind of like moral authority or power that they had before. Where, or, or like people, I don't know, you said you were talking about CRT earlier. Um, for the most part, I agree with all the fundamental things that CRT says, but like the way that CRT uses the words white supremacy, I think is a little bit like a little fast and loose because like, yeah, it leaves people thinking that like, oh my God, white supremacy, that's like a highly intentional, like really fucked horrible thing. But then you'll find out that it just means you're like supporting like cultural norms. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. And CRT is hard to push down, right? Because it's like a very widespread movement that has different applications in so many different areas. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of that, I think you, so this is the point that I was trying to make last week, right? Is that I'm always in support of expanding the lexicon. So like coming up with more words to describe experience, because especially when it comes to women and sex, what we have at the moment is sexual assault and rape, uh, which can range anywhere from a literal crime of war to uh, something happened in the middle of a consensual sexual interaction that I didn't love, but it was stopped pretty quickly, but still I feel like I have been assaulted, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, oh, as you said, like a touch on the back, you know? Yeah. And this which is it's, which to be clear, just to be really, really clear, that is bad, right? People shouldn't that, be doing yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, two things, and this is where I'll get clipped and canceled. Um, one is that, um, under like, here's the leftist warning as well. So under like neoliberalism, um, trauma is sort of like a passport to talk about. Things. Oh, I read so, this like, paper you sent me about, yeah. Yep, Yeah. <laughs> so like, if you can, if you say that there's some sort of like, uh, you've had some sort of traumatic experience that gives you authority to speak on that situation. Mm -hmm. So people uh, who want to talk about like, a, and that's why so often discussions about sex also come down to this idea of like, so quickly it's like consent and trauma right because mm -hmm. it's like i have authority to talk about this i can't tell you i'm a slut and that's why i have authority to talk about it so i'll tell you that i was a victim instead mm -hmm. right um so one there's like this attachment to trauma as a form of authority but two there's like a, a lot of because we don't have like for women it's either terrible horrible sexual experience where i was victimized or 
best sex of my fucking life, I was respected, I'm a goddess, and there's nothing in between that. Mm -hmm. There's no language to sort of understand those, like, you know, as is Ansari, there's no language for us to talk about what happened there. What is a bad sexual encounter? Immediately, it's like rape, 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 rape. Yeah, there's no language for bad sex Mm -hmm. at all. And so... And, or and what do you or what do you call it when happening. somebody is like you're kind of like the way that you're like treating this person is like it's pretty clear you're doing this because they're like a certain culture it's kind of cringe stop it out we, we or cut it out we don't have like a word for that just racist he's racist he's being yeah. racist right it's like fuck exactly and so when we do you, like we need to expand the lexicon mm-hmm. so that women actually have language and men have language to talk about like shit house sex that isn't just like I was raped and because of the attachment to trauma as a source of authority like often when people are sitting together and trying to make sense of their experiences or sharing a, a situation there is an inclination in the current moment for people to go you realize that was rape right like you realize you're assaulted right oh yeah and the so, the the post hoc trauma <laughs> like and that's are you traumatized right now maybe you should be you dumb bitch cuz you were fucking raped even if you don't know it i need you to get traumatized right now yeah holy shit I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of people who need external help to make sense to identify of toxic. their experience. For sure. And mm-hmm. and to make sense, like, because you also don't, like, you don't want to excuse things in your life moving forward because your goalposts are in the wrong place, right? Yeah. Like, if you're, if, if, like, trigger warning, but if you're, like, abused your entire life and then your brain sort of connects the wires to believe that that kind of abuse is love, like, you need someone on, on the outside to be like, yo... <laughs> that's not it like you don't need to accept that that's definitely not okay right Mm -hmm. like of course there are times when that external check-in is necessary to stop cycles of abuse etc but there are also times when like because we don't have the language to talk about that stuff in the middle perfectly experiences that you could have been quite okay with are then recategorized after the fact to something that you now have to deal with um and really change your perspective on yourself, the situation, what occurred, and it can be quite damaging. So I think expanding the lexicon instead of trying to bloat the terms that we have that exist to the point where they're meaningless mm-hmm. and and distort the reality we live in as well because we have this language that doesn't actually represent anything um, is extremely useful. But yeah, I think we agree on that, so. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, well, do you have anything else for me? No. Nah. Go play games. I mean, you're probably playing games now, so keep playing games. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, um, I appreciate the talk. Yeah, if you have any other things or anything, you always reach out. You know this, but yeah. Okay, thanks for the chat. I really appreciate yeah. it. Bye. All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your so feed. Destiny tweets out, don't invite someone over to your place unless you're comfortable fucking them. This is so obvious. Okay? So that's not necessarily my main contention. Uh, Uh (laughs) Uh-oh.